Look, it's been an amazing week, it's been an amazing month, it's been an amazing year. We're still here and we're still on YouTube. I'm actually on the street talking to expert about how much they spend living in China. Let's try. Hello, what's your name? Hello, I'm Nancy. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Ghana. My name is Kwame and I'm from Ghana. And what's your name? Where are you from? And how did you get to China? Three questions together. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Ziki and I am a Zimbabwean. I've been in China since 2013. How many years have you been in China? Um, for the past four years. How has life been so far? Oh, it hasn't all been sweet. There are ups and downs, but so far it's been good so far. Uh, why did you come to China though? Well, initially I came here for business. Okay. I was into buying and selling, you know, coming here to buy goods and going back. Okay, before I decided to make it a long-term stay. Oh, all right. So you are not a student. You are just a businesswoman. Uh, after the business side, I enrolled into university. Then I studied here. Oh, what did you study? I studied communication. Communication. Okay, that's nice. Um, you are in Beijing. Is that the only cities that you have lived? I've lived in Fujian province before Wuxian city. Then I came here in Beijing. Those are the only cities I've lived in China. And uh, if you can tell me, what has been the, uh, the lifestyle between these two places? Oh, Beijing is more lively than Wuxian. Wuxian has interesting places, but... You wouldn't have fun as much as you would do in Beijing. Okay, so what do you do in China, though? I'm a student. Okay, student uh, reading what? International business. And how is it? Ah, oh, it's been tough, but we're getting it. <laughs> okay, okay. Is Beijing the only place you have stayed? I have stayed in Beijing for all this time, but of course I visited other places, other places yes, but not to stay, just for holiday or vacation. Okay, yeah. so all these years you've been in China, how has the experience been so far? Well, I would say we have had the good, the bad, and the in-between. <laughs> <laughs> in-between, explain. What do you mean by Okay, it? when I say in-between, I'm, I'm just, you know, being relative. Like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's very bad, and sometimes it's just in-between good and bad. So, that's basically what I'm saying. All right, so you live outside campus or you live on campus? I live on campus. Okay. Uh, break it down for me. How much do you pay for your uh, dormitory? Oh, my room is like um, 90 RMB per day. So it's calculated according to the semester. So I lived there just recently. So I paid for like two months, which is um, May and June and a little bit part of April, the ending of April. So I paid for 75 days. So times my 90 and I paid almost 6,700, almost. Like details of how much you spend a week. Okay. So my dormitory that I'm living, I don't have a kitchen. So basically it's either I get a Y Mai or I I just eat outside. Maybe go to a friend's place, eat or something. And with that, if I should maybe in the morning, let's say I spend thirty R and B or forty R and B on Y Mai, in the afternoon I do the same thing, in the evening I do the same thing. In the evening, close to the evening, I, let's say fifty for each time of the day, I would spend like one fifty R and B just for food. So if I should spend like that, if I should eat like three squared meals and maybe most of them I estimated fifty R and B per morning afternoon and evening i could spend like 150 rmb and that is quite making me spend a lot but when i was living outside i had a kitchen and so i could cook put it in the fridge and be heating and eating it and that has made my cost of living gone high but other than that i think it's a cool thing okay yeah. it's a cool thing if you compare back home in ghana and uh, over here in china uh which place would you say you you spend too much money on what? Oh, back home I have my parents to depend on. I don't pay rent. I don't pay water. I don't pay light. Okay. I didn't even pay for the food I eat. Okay. But here I'm living on my own and I have to take care of everything that I need for myself. Wow. So the cost of living here is a little bit more. It's more expensive as compared to living in Ghana for myself. And as a student too. Yeah, and as a student too, you know. Okay. <laughs> because you have lived outside campus before, mm -hmm. and now you're living on campus, would you say living on campus and living on outside, which one is more comfortable? 
with the comfortability let's say you live outside and you have a shared apartment mm -hmm. you don't have maybe some kind of privacy mm -hmm. but when you live on campus and you have your own room for yourself you have your privacy that is comfortable but if you live outside as well in all i think that the comfortability and affordability depends on the individual and me living on campus is okay from just that i spend a lot of food which i'm not supposed to so i'll try to cut down the cost but overall it's been nice and i'm enjoying living here in china is beijing an expensive place to be it is an expensive place to, to, to be, but also, you know, it depends again what you do, how you want your lifestyle to be. You know, you can live cheap, you can live expensive, depending on, you know, how you want to live. How much is your rent? My rent is uh, 5,500 RMB. Is it a shared apartment or single apartment or studio apartment? It's a single apartment. Single apartment. You live alone? Yes. Wow, 5,000. She's rich. <laughs> All right. What is so costly in Beijing? Accommodation. Accommodation. Accommodation is very, very expensive. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, I want you to break it down for me. How much do you spend per week? Well, <laughs> per week, I would say maybe I spend, uh, let me just say on transportation, mm -hmm. I spend about, let me see, 50 RNB. Okay. Because I use, I, I use subway. So Subway is a little bit cheap, so I use about 50 RNB for transportation. And then for food, I use less than 200 RNB. So within a week, you use 50 RNB. Transportation. What about transportation? Yeah. Yeah. What about clubbing, going out with your friends? Okay, now that, uh, so the one I gave you, the 50 RNB is just for going to work and coming back. Okay. You know, but the the clubbing side of it is optional you know you know you know the deed is expensive sometimes and also the beer you know it's a little bit expensive and when you go there you know you want to show off a little bit so yeah it's expensive uh, it's a bit expensive all right let me take you back to zimbabwe if you compare uh the cost of living in zimbabwe and you compare the cost of living in china which one would you say is very expensive china is very expensive like super expensive Okay. Yes. In what terms? The rentals are just too, too high. You know, sometimes you find, especially I used to stay in the CBD, mm -hmm. Dong Jimen area there. Mm -hmm. I was sharing an apartment, but I used to pay close to 4000 per one room, shared apartment. Just a, a room like So it's very, very expensive. In terms wow. Of For you to live comfortably in China, Beijing, how much do you think you need? Maybe you need around uh, 7,000. 7,000 RMB. That's included everything. After you pay your rent, you buy your food, you pay your bills, you have your transportation and everything, you know. Okay. Yeah. Including clubbing too. Yes, yes, of course, yes. You can't skip clubbing in China. For people who are trying to come to China, especially with the female side, right? What advice would you give it to them when it comes to cost of living in China? Well, because the cost of living in China is a little bit high, also, you know, for you to get into the job market, for you, to, it's very difficult. So you find that most of the time, if you come unplanned, you end up indulging in some activities to earn extra money that is out of moral bounds, you understand? So for ladies, especially, it becomes something where you feel like, I can use, I'm beautiful, right? I, you know, I'm, I'm beautiful. Why not use my body to make that extra money to pay rent, you know, to buy food, to buy clothes? So you end up doing some other things. So I will recommend that if you really want to come and make sure that you have planned your things properly, you have some extra money that you are going to use until such a time that you are able, you know, to earn something and take care of yourself. And also, I also encourage, like, parents who have got young girls who want to come and stay in China, make sure that your child is taken care of. Don't just send them to the diaspora and then you say well my child is in the diaspora now they can take care of me where are they getting the money you understand you also have to be cautious of that because living in beijing living in china is expensive can you tell me your name where you're from and how long you've been in china my name is martin mazikanda mm -hmm. i'm from zimbabwe mm -hmm. and i've been in china for let's say this year september makes it the seventh year how has the experience been so far, all these seven years? Man, I would say it's a mixture. It's a mixture of good times and bad times. Okay. Yeah, I would say before the COVID, I would say everything was fine, super fine. Life was easy in China. Life was smooth. Like they had this 
soft spot for for foreigners i'd say mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they wouldn't require you to uh to prove things over and over again you know like they do now so before the covid yeah i'll say the years before the covid that is from 2016 to 2021 mm -hmm. 2020 mm -hmm. things were fine but things after, were fine things were fine okay. you could you could easily get a job the visa policies were flexible mm -hmm. It's like they wanted foreigners to stay, mm -hmm. especially Africans. So okay. everything was smooth. But when the COVID came, it's, it's like they, 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 they found an excuse. They had an excuse like, okay, so this is the time we've been waiting for. We're going to get rid of those people. So they changed these visa policies. They started making things hard for people. You know, you cannot easily get a visa. Students were sent back to their countries, even those who were in scholarship. Mm. Yeah, I think you know that. Mm. So, yeah, I would say now it's way much difficult. You cannot find a job. You cannot get a visa. They've designed a system okay. to make foreigners feel uncomfortable. Mm. How much do you pay for your rent? 5,300 RMB. Per month? Per month, yeah. And in US dollars, I would say that's slightly below $900. $900. Yeah. Okay, so if you compare the cost of living in China and cost of living back home in Zimbabwe, which one would you say is more expensive? The life in China is expensive. Life. Very expensive. Life in China is very expensive. It's very expensive. It's like, especially in Beijing, it's really expensive. In other smaller cities, you can find maybe apartments going for uh, three, five, four, five depending on where you want to live. But in Beijing, it's really expensive. Even the food is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so back home, the issue is, well, you know, the economies in Africa, most of them are not doing so well. But if you have something that you're doing that gives you a little income, I, I would say it's far much better to, to stay in Africa and live in Africa as long as you can afford a decent life there because the cost of living is way affordable. How much do you spend per week? Well, for me, for transport, uh, I need ten dollars okay. for transport. Okay. That is, if I don't take the the DD sometimes, if I just stick to the metro and the bus, okay. that's ten dollars for five days. Because uh, Monday to Friday, the weekends, I we don't travel much, so I'll just say ten to twelve dollars a week. That's me. My wife, the same thing. And our two daughters have those uh, train passes, those bus passes. So that'll be $12 times four. That's $48 a week for the whole family because the kids have to go to school. We go to work. The mother goes to school as well. So yeah, $48 for transport. And for food, we buy vegetables every day. And vegetables are quite affordable in China. You can, you can buy them every day because you know most of them are not organic like those we have home so if you buy a lot of them they can go bad whilst in the fridge I mean, you know yeah so you have to budget for day-to-day -day vegetables day-to-day -day bread maybe milk yeah so for food in one week we need again 300 rmb if someone wants to come to um china uh -huh. from africa from different country who is watching you uh -huh. what kind of advice would you give it to the person and I wouldn't want to lie. I, I don't want to, 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 uh, to mislead people mm -hmm. or to frighten people. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, it depends with uh, who you are and what you want to do in China. Why are you coming? I mean, are you coming for a decent thing? Like, is it school? Is it work? Like, you employed by a company? Is it a Chinese company? Or any uh, other company that can uh, provide you with a decent papers? Mm -hmm. A decent home, a decent salary, yes, you can come. But if it's just like, okay, I want to go and hustle, like other people there are here are teaching, so I want to go and try my luck, I would say, as long as you're from Africa, right now, it's better you don't come. But if you just want to come and try your luck, and you know, maybe the situation back home is so bad, you think you can deal with running away from the police, you know, dealing with landlords, because the police here, influences everyone the landlords mm -hmm. uh, the employers once you you uh you get in trouble with them you cannot work you cannot afford a place to stay we know people who are living in the streets right now like spending two weeks sleeping in the subway train station Ooh. kfc wow. you know you know how you know how things work because people come thinking that okay when i get there 
I can uh, uh, I can change my visa from this uh, student visa or maybe uh, tourist visa to get a work visa or something like that. But it's no longer the same. Once you come without your papers, once you come without the proper papers, you cannot change. And in China, it's not easy to leave without papers. It's really difficult. So I don't want people, I don't, I don't advise people who are not in a situation uh, of getting uh, decent employment to come to China. I don't think so. Unless, if it's school, yeah, you have a scholarship, that's fine. You have, you employed by a big company, that's, that's fine. fine, yeah. Thank you very much for watching Lake Stop TV. Cost of living in China, we're coming once again. Thank bro. Hey, thank you.